trenching. When installing the scoring loop in a dirt track, trenching is needed. You can use a single trench line for each side of the scoring loop, or in this case, a mini excavator dug a trench about 24 inches wide in one pass. The more parallel the loop is, horizontally and vertically, the more accurate your timing system will be. A single trench makes it easier to keep both sides of the scoring loop parallel with each other. The ideal depth in most cases is 12 to 18 inches down from the racing surface. You want to be close to the surface, but not so close that any equipment disturbs it, such as a sheep's foot or grater. Other factors to consider are soil composition because some soils contain a larger concentration of metallic matter than others. We have found that 16 inches is a good rule of thumb for most facilities. We recommend that the length of your trench from the front stretch wall stay around 70 foot or less in total length. When installing a scoring loop for a new paved or concrete surface, place your plastic pipe beneath your surface forms. When installing a scoring loop in an existing paved or concrete surface, use a diamond blade saw to cut two grooves 24 inches center to center. Keeping the scoring loop wires as parallel as possible is key. We recommend grooves of at least a half inch in depth to protect the loop wire and to have enough cavity to top fill the grooves with sealant. Loop Wire and Pipe The loop wire is sent to you in two coils with a 470 ohm resistor already soldered in line with heat shrink. The number one loop issue is water that gets inside the pipe surrounding the wire so keeping the inside of the pipe or pex dry is very important. In this particular application we used half inch pex pipe 300 foot long. The reason we use pex of this length in place of gray plastic 10 foot section pipe is to reduce the chance for water to get into the pipes and affect the timing system. Vibrations from racing and track prep can over time shake the pieces of pipe loose. So the less sections the better for the timing system. We set the pipe in the corners of the trench to make sure they're parallel with each other horizontally and vertically. We lock them down sometimes with landscape spike nails or fill some dirt back into the trench. To get the wire in the pipe, you can vacuum a string line or mule line, but we usually use a metal fish tape. When you fish the wire in, you want to be careful and walk your loop wire out each direction so it does not tangle up before you put it through the pipe. The orange wire is constructed with the exact same length on each side of the ohm resistor. When you fish the wire through your pipe, you should have the same amount of wire out of each end of the pipe, making sure the ohm resistor is at the bottom of the racetrack in the middle between the two loop wires. Once the scoring loop wire is installed in the pipe and before it's fixed to the balance circuit board, we recommend conducting an ohm meter reading, which should be around 470 ohms depending on the length of the wire. Once the ohm reading is correct, you know it's safe to cover up your trenching. The ballon is what each loop wire attaches to and relays the signal to the decoder through a coax cable. It's always better if the two loop wires are attached to the ballon from opposite directions. It is crucial that you don't let the loop wires cross over into each other at any given point in your scoring loop. Any extra loop wire should be cut and disregarded. We recommend that you crimp and solder terminal INs on loop wires. You must remove screws for this application and tighten them back up enough to maintain a steady signal. This is another crucial part close to the racing surface that can vibrate loose over time. The ballon is also very sensitive to water or a highly corrosive environment, so we recommend it be installed in a water safe box. On the coax side of the ballon connection, make sure the BNC coax connection is locked down against the two pins. Once in place, tape the connection to ensure against vibration. Coax from ballon to scoring table. The coax should have a BNC connector at its end. Every facility is different in the length from the ballon to the scoring table. It's always best to use molded end coax cables. The coax can be ran underground or overhead. It does not have to be in a conduit pipe, but it is highly recommended. Please tape up each BNC end of your coax so you do not ruin the fittings while fishing them through the pipe. Coax with BNC ends will fit through a 3 quarter inch electrical plastic conduit pipe. 
Once you have landed your coax cable at the scoring table, make sure it's not intertwined with any other cabling or power supplies. They may have electrical pulses that will interfere with the scoring system. The coax with the BNC connector simply plugs in the back of the iDEC decoder. Make sure the BNC connector is tied against the pins of the male connection on the decoder box. At this point you will power up the decoder box, then sync it with the computer and get ready to electronically score your event. We have reached the checkered flags of the scoring loop construction video. The Westhold team thanks you for watching this instructional video. Now let's go racing!